with Greg Steer uh, called Why Teenagers Are the Key to Reaching the World for Christ and How to Mobilize Them. My name is John Burdett, and uh, Greg and I work with the ministry called Dare to Share, and our mission is to energize the church, to mm -hmm. mobilize youth, to gospelize their world. And so just a couple of quick reminders, uh, just so everybody can get the most out of this session. Uh, we would love it if your cameras were on, just so there could be more interaction. So uh, if you're able to do that, we would love for you to do that. And of course, uh, if you wouldn't mind just keeping your microphone on mute uh, in the time being, and then uh, during any time that you might speak up or ask a question, uh, obviously make sure you unmute first. And so we are gonna have a Q&A session uh, Q&A time at the end of this uh, session uh, that Greg will answer some questions. But if you think of a question uh, while, uh, while the presentation is going on, while Greg is sharing with us, uh, then uh, feel, feel free to type that in the, uh, in the chat box and we will capture those and make sure we get to those at the, uh, at the end of the session. So uh, Greg Steer, uh, he's a speaker, author uh, with passion uh, to share the gospel personally and also to ins inspire, equip, and mobilize teenagers and adults to do the same. Uh, he's also the founder of Dare to Share Ministries, and uh, our ministry, we just have this bold vision, really, uh, of every teen everywhere hearing the gospel from a friend. So again, we're both very excited to be here with you today. I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer, and then after that, going to show a brief video, and then afterwards, we'll hear from my good friend and mentor, Greg Steer, about why Teenagers are the key for reaching the world for Christ and how we can mobilize them. So uh, let, join me in prayer, uh, praying together, if you would. Uh, Father, we, uh, we just uh, come before you. We're just so thankful uh, for this time that we have to gather. Uh, thank you for this conference and just for the technology that allows us to meet in this way. Uh, I pray that this conference has uh, just been a time of uh, being refreshed and refueled. Uh, Lord, I do pray for the technology to run smoothly uh, during this session and the connection to remain strong and uninterrupted, uh, both during this session and the remainder of the conference. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you work through Greg powerfully, powerfully as he shares. And then I, I just pray that all of us, every leader here, uh, every person here will be inspired and encouraged. And uh, Lord, may we all uh, just be uh, motivated uh, to mobilize a generation, to reach a generation with the good news of Jesus. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. A spark starting. A fire building. A revolution spreading all over the world. Because we dare to share. We got the skills. We have the tools. To share face to face. And face to face. Day, night, whenever I'm connected. I am everywhere. I share Jesus anywhere. I speak Mandarin, Arabic, Hungarian. Because I speak Google. That's how it is. Oceans can't stop me. Jungles and swamps and deserts and mountains can't stop me. Guns and gangs and tyrants and thugs can't stop me. It's like this. Phone. Touch. Text. Boom. Connection. What's on my heart is on your heart. Is on her heart. Is on his heart. One voice becomes a thousand. Becomes a million. More people than any tent or stadium can hold. We're taking charge of this revolution. This gospel revolution. This generation's gonna get it done. While we're young. While hearts are open. A billion teen hearts are at stake. Whole countries are at stake. The future of the church is at stake. We get it, because we're fearless. Through Christ, we're fearless. And we won't stop until every teen everywhere has Jesus in their life 
and fire in their soul. Boom. Boy, I love that video. It really captures the vision of reaching every teen everywhere. We're going to be talking about reaching teenagers for Christ and why they're why they are strategic in reaching the world for Christ. Sometimes I think when we think of teenagers, we probably think of, you know, people that have, you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of problems. We hear about all of the struggles that teenagers are going through. And uh, it reminds me of uh, last uh, August, it was my 30 year wedding anniversary. So I took my wife and kids to Florida uh, in August, it was hot. <laughs> so we went to the beach and we're there at the beach and it is beautiful. And my wife and my son are walking down the beach collecting seashells. And my daughter, my 16 year old daughter and myself were in the water in this nice warm Florida water. My, my daughter's a little bit freaked out by the waves but I'm, I'm kind of out there a little bit and a school of fish just start swimming up all around me. And I am, I'm about chest deep and I'm trying to capture these little four inch fish. I'm like, come here little fishy. And I'm totally embarrassing my 16 year old daughter. The waves are crashing and I could not hear the voice of the lady on the beach with her two daughters at first screaming, hey, idiot, you're surrounded by sharks. And I look up, there's eight sharks all around me, including a seven foot tiger shark. And let me tell you, in John 14, 12, when Jesus said greater things than these shall you do, it's true because he just walked on water and I ran on it. I was so scared. But once I got to the beach, I joined, I looked and first of all, just saw all those sharks in the middle of a feeding frenzy. Uh, and then I joined that lady uh, and her two teenage daughters and my teenage daughter joined us and we went down the beach and we warned, ev warned everybody, get out of the water, the sharks are coming. And I thought, man, what, a, what an illustration of reaching teenagers for Christ. Our teenagers are in these shark infested waters surrounded mm -hmm. by the world, the flesh and the devil and they mm -hmm. are in a feeding frenzy. Well, Jesus calls them out uh, to the safety of the shore Thankfully, he doesn't say, hey, idiot, like that lady said to me, but he calls them out. And once they're out, they're able to join him on that mission of warning others and getting other teenagers uh, out of those shark infested waters. We're going to talk about why teenagers are strategic. Now, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. I was a church planner. I was a lead pastor for about 10 years. Uh, I believe in adult ministry. I believe in church planning, but I began to realize that if we're going to really reach the world for Christ, we have to reach and mobilize the next generation. So I'm going to kind of go through these points. If you miss some of them, that's fine because John Burdett will be putting notes uh, in the uh, note section there in the chat box so that you can uh, take those notes. But we're going to talk about why teenagers are strategic. And then the second part is going to be how to mobilize them. And then the third part, is you're going to be asking questions. And in the last half of this, I'm going to do my best to answer those questions. So if you have any questions specifically, put, please put those in the chat box and John will collect those and we'll ask and answer those at the end. So why teenagers? Why should we focus on reaching teenagers? By the way, I am so grateful that Bill uh, made this a workshop because I think so many times when it comes to missions, we don't think of the next generation, uh, but man, I think if we're really going to reach this world for Christ, we have to reach this next generation with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me give you uh, five quick reasons why teenagers. Number one, uh, God loves to use teenagers. Just, just read the Bible. <laughs> I mean, you'll see a teenage boy named David. Now, David was probably 15 years old when he fought Goliath because he had eight older brothers and uh, only the three oldest were old enough to fight in the war. That means he had four, uh, he had seven older brothers, but the four of them were not old enough yet to fight in the war. He had to be at least 20 years old. So he's, I'm just backing it out. He's probably at the latest 15 years old when he takes on Goliath and God uses him to take that giant down. 
And it's interesting when you see that giant fall, all the adult Israeli soldiers are hiding in their foxholes. As soon as Goliath dies standing on his feet, those adults catapult out of their foxholes with a shout and chase the Philistines down. I think that's a pattern for revival. Our teens can lead the way and the adults will follow suit. God loves to use teenagers, not just David. You look at Esther, this teenage girl, you see Joseph, you see the disciples. Now you may not think of the disciples as teenagers. Let me tell you why I'm convinced the disciples were teenagers. Most of them were teenagers when they began to follow Christ. If you look at Matthew 17, 24 through 27, Peter, Jesus, and the disciples go into Capernaum, but only Peter and Jesus pay the temple tax, which is interesting. Because when you cross-reference that with Exodus chapter 30, verse 14, the temple tax, which is originally the tabernacle tax, was only for those 20 years old and older. So all the disciples are there in Capernaum, but only Peter and Jesus pay. So if I'm reading that right, Jesus was a youth leader with one adult sponsor, right? And one really rotten kid named Judas and no budget. And with that youth ministry, he transformed the world. And again, you may be thinking, well, that was Jesus. Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. Because we have his Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. So God can use a youth group of 12 or 11, take Judas out of the equation, to shake the world for Christ. God can use your small youth group to transform your city with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God loves to use teenagers. Why? I think the answer is in 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 29. When, when Paul writes, think of you, what you were when you were called. How many were you wise by human standards, but God chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Let me just tell you, there's nothing more foolish than a typical teenager. And God loves to use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, wise so that no one may boast before him. The number one reason I believe God loves to use teenagers is because they're the foolish things of this world. Why focus on teens? God loves to use uh, teenagers. Secondly, um, every teen, the bottom line is teens come to Christ quicker than adults. Shane Pruitt, who is the uh, executive director of Next Generation Ministry uh, for the North American Mission Board, uh, did a survey, he discovered that 77% of the 2,600 plus people he surveyed, 77% came to Christ before the age of 18. After the age of 30, only 5% came to Christ. Now, I'm not saying we don't need to reach adults. Of course, we need to reach adults. But in the words of my grandpa, he used to always tell me, get to getting while the getting's good. And the getting is good when people are young. They're more open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm, not, I'm no businessman, but if I was a businessman, I would, I, would, uh, I would go to the demographic that was most likely to buy my product. And let me just tell you this. Teenagers are way more likely to accept Christ than adults are. So we need to at least pay close strategic attention to reaching teenagers with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only do they come to Christ quicker than adults, the third reason is they can spread the gospel farther than adults. Did you know that the average teenager has at least 425 online and face-to-face -face friends? Think about that. 425 online and face-to-face -face friends. And I know we're all nervous about social media and they're rightfully so there's some dangerous things on social media, but you know, with a Snapchat or a TikTok or an Instagram from one teenager, they could literally reach hundreds of their peers with the message that Jesus is the way. Because teenagers know how to use social media and if they can use that for the glory of God and advancement of his kingdom, we can see God do some amazing things. A fourth reason to focus on teenagers is that teenagers are facing unprecedented levels of anxiety and fear. Right now, we're living in a culture where we're losing teenagers. You know, in uh, uh, suicide is the number one uh, cause of death in my home state of Colorado. You see my Colorado sign back there. I live in Colorado. Uh, number one uh, cause of death and uh, teen death in Colorado. Number two cause of death 
nationally, number three cause of death globally, and the pandemic. Those were statistics before the pandemic hit. Uh, according to Dr. Robert Redfield, the director of the CDC, we've lost far more teenagers to suicide and overdosing in the last eight or nine months than we had uh, have COVID-19. So we are, we are uh, experiencing a generation that is isolated and that isolation leads to desperation and that desperation sadly oftentimes leads to suicide or overdosing because of the anxiety. Teenagers are social creatures and they need each other. Right now, we need to get our Christian kids to reach out to their non-Christian friends with the hope of Jesus Christ. And the final reason we focus on reaching teens is because it's our only hope for our nation. It's the only hope for our world. Everybody is freaking out right now about what is happening across the United States. But actually, I think it's uh, people around the world are nervous about what, what's happening uh, in the United States. You know, we're, we're like, what do we do? Let me just tell you this. Thoreau said this, for every thousand hacking at the leaves of evil, one strikes at the root. The only thing that can strike at the root of evil, it's not politics, it's not moral reformation, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that can be the game changer for this next generation. Now, I've seen this in my own family. Uh, my uh, son, two years ago, started dating a girl who was a brand new believer. She came to Christ through Young Life, but her dad uh, is a stepdad's an atheist. Her biological dad can't even come to Colorado because he's wanted. Um, she was pro everything. We we're anti and anti everything. We were pro as believers in Christ. My son goes, what do we do? And I said, well, one of two things. You can dump her. And I'm thinking, please choose option one. Or number two, you can teach her the authority of God's word. And, and if she gets that, everything else will self-correct. Well, guess what? He goes, I'm going for option two, dad. Will you help me? I go, yeah, I'll help you. Took her on family vacations, took her to church with us on Sunday, went out to eat afterward, talking all the time about theology and God and the authority of God's word. Guess what? Two years later, she's pro everything. We're pro anti everything. We're anti. And it's because the authority of God's word transformed her worldview. So if we really want to see this nation transformed, it's not going to happen politically. It's not going to happen morally. It's going to happen spiritually. If we can reach and train and disciple and mobilize this next generation, we could see this nation, we could see this world transformed by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, so that's why teenagers, why teens? We got to reach them. Every major spiritual awakening in the last 300 years in the United States is that teenagers on the leading edge of that spiritual awakening. Jonathan Edwards, who was the, he was the chief historian of the first great awakening back in the 1700s. He said this, the revival has been chiefly amongst the young. So it was a teen led revival that really transformed the colonies and prepared us to become the United States, the Republic that we are. And maybe it's a student led revival that will repair uh, this Republic. The power of the gospel, the potential of teenagers. It is the hope of our nation. It's the hope of our world. And maybe you're, you're not uh, in the United States right now, whatever nation you're at, it's the power of the gospel, the potential of the next generation. So how do we mobilize them? How do we mobilize them? I'm gonna go through quick, seven quick uh, truths, seven quick values that will help you do that. And before I go through those, I just wanna share this with you. Uh, several years ago at Dare to Share, that's the ministry uh, I founded, we did a massive survey. We discovered seven values that were present in every youth ministry that was seeing 25% new conversion growth per year or more. So the youth groups that were thriving with new disciples had seven common distinctives. And I cross-checked all those with the book of Acts. They're all over the book of Acts. So I'm gonna quickly go through those with you. And if you don't catch these right away, John will put those in the chat box as well. Seven values of a gospel advancing ministry. I know it's not super clear, uh, but, I'll just, I know them by heart. So number one, intercessory prayer fuels it. Intercessory prayer fuels it. So the youth ministries that reach the most of the lost for Christ, 
they pray the most for the lost to come to Christ. And John, I don't, I actually don't think we can see those two clearly. So you, you may just want to pull those off and put those in the chat box. I'll just kind of go over those with you and you can just take notes from the chat box. Number one, intercessory prayer. If we want to really get our kids mobilized to reach their peers with the gospel, we got to get them praying for the lost. Now, when I was about nine or 10 years old, I was walking to school and about a 10 block walk to school. I live in Colorado. It's a cold uh, Colorado winter. I had a, a leather jacket on. I begged my mom to buy me this thick leather jacket and she did. I couldn't believe it. I'm glad I had it on that day because uh, two German shepherds from across the room ran ac uh, across the street, ran across the street and attacked me. They backed me up against the fence. I crossed my uh, face with my arms. I held on to the chain link. One went for the one arm, one went for my stomach and they were trying to tear me down off this chain link fence. And I knew if they got me to the ground, they'd kill me. And I'm screaming, I'm just a kid, nine or 10 years old. And out of the corner of my eye, I see a, I see a, a figure moving toward us. It's a little old lady named Ma Zemer. Her nickname was Ma Zemer. She had a baseball bat and boom, she cracked one of these German shepherds in the head and boom, she cracked the other one. And then she stood between me and those barking dogs swinging that bat and cursing. You know that word, the Latin word for intercessor means a go-between. So Ma Zemer was my intercessor. She stood between me and the danger swinging that bat. And in the same way, we need, to, we need to help our teenagers stand between their friends and the danger because the hounds of hell are seeking to drag this next generation to hell and through hell apart from Jesus Christ. Prayer, in a sense, is that baseball bat. We get to stand between teenagers and the danger. We need to call our teenagers to pray for their friends that don't know Christ. First Timothy 2, 1 through 4. Paul has given instructions to Timothy about how to program the church. And he says, first of all, I want prayers, intercessions, uh, requests made for all people because God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. He's telling him, here's how you program your services. Start with prayer. Now think about that. We spend more time in a typical youth group meeting, church service, and announcements than intercessory prayer for the lost. And we wonder why we don't experience revival. So we need to pray. We need to get our kids praying. We need to get our teenagers praying for their lost friends. Number one, intercessory prayer fuels it. Number two, relational evangelism drives it. Relational evangelism drives it. So the youth groups that grew the most, according to this survey that we did, this national survey, the teenagers were equipped with gospel urgency, gospel fluency, and gospel strategy. So they knew why, that's the gospel urgency, why I need to be sharing my faith with my friends. They understood that teenagers without Christ uh, had no hope in this world, no lasting hope. They understood that teenagers without Christ, when they died, would face an everlasting hopelessness in hell. So teenagers were motivated for the, by the love of God, by the urgency of the mission, by the reality of hell, by judgment, by all these different motivations to share Christ with their friends. Gospel urgency. Number two, gospel fluency. They knew the gospel message. So one of the things that we do at Dare to Share is we use gospel acrostic to explain the gospel message, G-O-S-P-E-L. God created us to be with him. O is our sins separate us from God. S is sins cannot be removed by good deeds. P is paying the price for sin. Jesus died and rose again. E is everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. And L is life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. And that all spells out a gospel acrostic. Some of you may want some help with that. We, we'll give you some help in just a moment. We have all of that on an app, which leads us to gospel strategy. There was a gospel strategy for teens to engage their lost friends in gospel conversations. If you don't know how to do that, we do at Dare to Share, we have a, an app that will help you do that. It's called Life in Six Words. Life in Six Words. And on that app, it's pretty cool. 
It's a free app because you can't charge for a gospel app. I don't think. I guess you could. Uh, it's called Life in Six Words. And on this app, you can explain each one of the God created us to be with him. Our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in him alone is eternal life. Life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. You put all those together. Spells gospel. By the way, just so you know, you click the world icon. It's in Arabic. It's in Chinese, English, French, German, Hungarian, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, Spanish. Click those. We're about to get it in Hindi uh, and others. We're going to have our goal is to get it in every major language. So go to your app store, have your students download Life in Six Words, and it's all there right on their phone uh, so that they can begin to share the gospel. What I tell teenagers, if you can swipe and read, you can share the gospel. Again, a free app, Life in Six Words, and um, just something to check out too. What's pretty cool is you can see when you open it up where there's active gospel conversations happening in the United States and actually around the world. There's a map of the world. You can see that. It's a great, great tool for teenagers to begin to share their faith. Okay, the third value is so relational evangelism drives us. What do I mean by that? Teens reaching their friends online and face-to-face. -face. By the way, there's some pandemic proof tools on this app that teens can share using what we call audio stories or quick starters. Really, really cool. Uh, don't have time to dive into it right now, but download the Life in Six Words app, mess around with it, and a great, great tool to equip your students. Um, Relational evangelism. Why relational evangelism? Because teenagers can share Christ on the streets with, their, with, with strangers and make converts, but you're really only going to make disciple, disciples in the context of a relationship. Good news is the average teen has got a ton of relationships that they can make and multiply disciples. The third value is this. Uh, leaders fully embrace and model it. Leaders fully embrace and model it. Luke 640 uh, Jesus said, no student is above their teacher, but when they're fully trained, they'll be like their teacher. Let me put it this way. If your teenagers aren't sharing their faith, you may need a mirror instead of a bullhorn. In other words, the problem may not be them. It may be you. Because if you're not sharing their, your faith, how can you ask them to share their faith? When I say share it, I don't mean just with your life. Yes, of course, with your life, but also with your lips. I mean, maybe you've heard that quote that's attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, uh, preach the gospel, if necessary, use words. I've adjusted that a little bit. Preach the gospel, it's necessary, use words. Live it with your life, but articulate that message as well with your lips. And then your teens can follow your lead. You don't have to be good at it. You just got to go for it, right? Number four, the fourth value is a disciple multiplication strategy guides it. So it's not just about making converts. It's about making disciples that make disciples. Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2, 2, the things you've heard from me among faithful men, uh, teach others also, and they'll be able to train others also. So you see four generations that are, it's a gift that keeps on giving. We multiply multipliers. It's about disciple multiplication, not just adding converts. Uh, number five, a bold vision uh, focuses it. By the way, again, if you have questions, I'm, I'm quickly going through these so you can ask any questions at the end and we can do our best, uh, John and I, to answer those. A bold vision focuses it. So the youth groups that were the most effective had a bold vision. Jesus had the boldest vision, Acts 1.8, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. What does that mean? Jerusalem, right, across the street for them, right? Uh, Samaria, across the tracks, the bad side of town, because the Jews didn't like going through Samaria. That's why it was a big deal that Jesus and John 4 uh, shared the good news with the Samaritan woman. 
and then across the world, across the planet. That's, that's our mission's thrust, across the street, across the tracks, across the world. That is a bold vision. And whatever vision we have for our youth groups, our teenagers, or the teenagers in our churches, it's got to include all three elements. We need to get them sharing Christ across the street, across the tracks, across the world. Um, so what is that bold vision? Well, one of the things we talked about at Dare to Share is there is 1 billion teens worldwide. 1 billion teenagers worldwide. Like 243 million teens in India. 2 million teens in Romania and about 27 million teens in the United States. And then you kind of take that down to your own state and your own city and your own community. And we encourage youth leaders to tear off a piece of that map and realize, you know what? We, get, we, have, we need to get every teen everywhere in our community to hear the gospel from a friend. That means we need to join other churches together for a common cause. We need to steal from the biggest youth group in town, which is Satan's, and unite together as the church. Not in some gushy ecumenical thing, but in a rock solid, you believe in what we call 5G theology, God, God's son, God's spirit, God's word, gospel. Then we can put our hands in the middle, right? And say, we're going to unite together for the common cause of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A bold vision focuses it. Sixth, is biblical outcomes measure it. So we're measuring the right things. What's the number one thing people tend to measure when it comes to youth ministry is attendance. But that's not the best measurement. We have a thing called new conversion growth, NCG. Let me explain what that means. Let's say there's a youth group of 20 and down the street, there's a youth group of 200. Upon first glance, which one looks more effective when it comes to evangelism? Youth group of 200. But let's say 10 of the youth group of 200 came to Christ from teens reaching teens. And let's say 10 of the youth group of 20 came to Christ from teens reaching teens. All of a sudden, the youth group of 20 is exponentially more effective at evangelism than the youth group of 200. So we need to measure the right things, spiritual maturation points, different things like that to help them grow. We have our friends at Sun Life. We love the ministry of Sun Life. They'll help you with uh, spiritual maturation points. They'll also help you with a disciple multiplication strategy. So sunlife.com, just check them out. Great, great ministry. And finally, the seventh value is ongoing programs reflect it. So if you're saying the advancement of the gospel, disciple multiplication is a priority, then you're going to see that reflected in your programs. You're going to see that reflected in your calendar. You're going to see that reflected on your rundown on Wednesday night or Sunday night or whenever you do youth group. There's going to be storytelling time of students that are sharing the gospel. There's going to be intercession time in small groups or the big group or somewhere. Uh, there's going to be prayer times. There's going to be outreach times. It's not just going to be once in a great while. You're going to be telling stories on a weekly basis because students are reaching their friends throughout the week. And that's when you go from typical youth ministry to a movement. And that's when that movement starts in the youth room and spreads throughout the entire church, entire community. So those are the seven values. I quickly went through those. A lot, a lot of stuff. We have more stuff for you. I wrote a book called Gospelize Your Youth Ministry. We use a red pepper because we talk about these seven values are like seven ingredients in you know, Mexican food, I love Mexican food. Most of it's got the same basic ingredients that are just remade in a thousand delicious ways, right? In the same way, if you have these seven ingredients of a gospel advancing ministry, uh, you may build it differently in Portland than we do in Denver or differently in Denver than they do in New York City or Miami or Des Moines, Iowa or Lincoln, Nebraska. But as long as you have those ingredients mixed in, it's gonna be delicious, it's gonna work, right? All these seven values are based not ultimately out of a survey, uh, but out of scripture. And you can actually get a digital version of this book available free of charge um, if you go to our uh, daretoshare.org website to the store, to the book section. You can get a hard copy, buy one, or you can just download it free of charge. Encourage you to do that. So, okay. So I would like to open it up 
to any questions that you guys may have. And John can moderate this. You can take yourself off mute and feel free to fire away. Could most of the people uh, click on the uh, video? Because, you know, there's hardly any pictures. There are only four pictures here right now. So we can see all our friends. Yeah, let me, uh, I'll just change the, uh, see if I can change the view so everybody can see each other. That's great, yeah. Ida, thank you. You know, I, uh, Greg, I so wish that our youth pastors would be part of this, you know. I have a passion for missions and uh, to see this generation of young people meeting every week and there's hardly any growth. And we had some missionaries here from Nicaragua and we finally convinced the youth pastor to come over to our missions house where they were staying for a barbecue. And it took a lot of doing to get them over there. But when they came, they were like 12 and the missionary asked, what do you think a missionary is? And most of them said, well, it's a person that's called by God and they go to a foreign country or live in a jungle. And here he has been telling them what a missionary is around it, like you have been just doing. And he said, you know, that is good too. But when you talk about being a disciple or a witness in, in Judea or Samaria to the end of the world, that is you walk out of your house to go to a sport or to see your friends going skating. That's your mission field. It's exactly like you were saying. And I wish, I mean, I pray there is more of a hunger with the pastors to see that growth happening. And I definitely will follow up with the um, apps that you hinted on and, uh, you know, even suggesting the book there. Um, but, you know, you cannot make somebody be a witness if they don't have the desire, if they don't ask God. Yeah, yeah I, I fully agree, Edith. And I think we need to reframe mm -hmm. mission work mm -hmm. with, because to teenagers, you know, even if they know what a missionary is, it sounds like something distant and dusty. And it's interesting at the same time, teenagers are super excited about causes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so at Dare to Share, the ministry I founded, we don't call the Great Commission the Great Commission. We call it the cause. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is the greatest cause in the history of human. We actually do a full week summer program called Lead the Cause, where we mobilize young people to be missionaries right where they're at. And then some of you may happen to be called to go somewhere globally, but all of us are called to yes. be missionaries. So we're, I think we need to do a better job at reframing missions for teenagers as the ultimate cause a teenager can be involved in. Well, so because here's a, one, of, one of the things we say. So like teenagers, uh, if you take a look, uh, some of the things they're passionate about, um, stopping human trafficking, right? Mm -hmm. um, feeding the poor, right? Uh, building homes for the homeless, uh, providing water wells for the thirsty. Now think about this. <clears throat> think about the gospel. What do we do? We are, we, we can, we can give somebody water and the living water. Mm -hmm. We can give them bread and the bread of life. Yes. We can yes. build them a house on earth and in heaven. We can stop human trafficking and soul trafficking. Mm -hmm. So you think about all of this, this is all missions work. And, yes. but yes. we, I think we need to do a better job. Somebody came up with that term three, 400 years ago, the great commission. And it sounded really cool at the time. So cool that an, 
uh, a generation of uh, those from England came and, and began, and then throughout Europe began to do the great mission works in the 18th and 19th century because of that great commission. Well, I think we can reframe it again and, and, and challenge them uh, now as well. So yeah, yeah. great, great job. Any other questions from anyone else? Thanks so much, Edith. Feel free to unmute and ask, or you can type it in the chat box, either way. We have a saying at Dare to Share, awkward is awesome. So we don't mind waiting through the awkward to get to the awesome. That's right. Well, listen, while you're doing that, think about any questions that you guys may have. I'll just share with you one quick story probably about 10 years ago, I was in Florida. Everything happens to me, happens in Florida, it seems like. Um, and I was with my kids and we were there for vacation and we could not afford to go to Disney World every day. We couldn't afford to park at Disney World every day. So we'd go to Disney World and then Gatorland, which is just, I mean, it was awesome. It's like redneck Disneyland, man. It was like just crazy, big gators and snakes everywhere then we go to disneyland or disney world then we go to the beach well one day we we remember we had some friends that lived in new smyrna beach florida which is the shark bite capital of the world so we had to go we go there my friends brought their youth leader john curiali he was super depressed and i ended up talking to him for three hours like why are you depressed he goes i go to a very conservative uh church the average age is 65. There's only five kids in the youth group. Nobody's passionate about evangelism. My five kids are lost. They don't know Christ. I don't know what to do. I don't know why God called me here. I go, well, I start by praying for him. You know, I kind of went, I didn't, we didn't have all the seven values figured out back then, but I started with, hey, start praying for them and then reach them and then train them to reach their friends. And well, he began every Thursday for two hours to pray for those five kids. One by one by one, those kids came to Christ. And then he trained them how to grow in Christ and how to share the gospel. Uh, and then those kids started sharing Christ with their friends and invited them out to youth group. In 12 months, he had 50 teenagers in that youth group. A hundred percent of them came to Christ as a result of hearing the gospel through those teens or at youth group. And he ended up getting fired because the pastor didn't want those kind of kids in his youth group. But he was not discouraged because he said, you know what? God's called me to do this. Now he planted a church, uh, Antioch uh, Church in Orlando. And he's got hundreds of adults now trained, equipped, and mobilized with the gospel of Jesus Christ. It started by uh, basically applying those seven values to see that transformation. I just want to share that story very quickly. Any questions you guys may have about those seven values or about reaching teenagers or... How do we make that more of a strategic priority? All right, well, keep thinking about it. John, uh, maybe you wanna share a little bit about some of the resources and tools that we have at Dare to Share that people can access, most of them free of charge. Um, that uh, youth yeah. leaders can access to, and, and adults that are passionate about teenagers. Because we, we believe youth leaders are anybody who leads youth. So it could be a parent, it could be a grandparent, could be an uncle, could be an aunt, could be a teenager that leads other teenagers, or it could be what a professional youth leader looks like in a typical church. So John, you just wanna share a little bit about that? Be happy to uh, just uh, put the put the dare to share dot org website in the chat box a couple of times. You can check that out. Uh, yeah, we've got several resources, many of which are already free and transitioning to free. Uh, obviously, the app that Greg talked about uh, that uh, those six statements built on those six words, God, our sins, paying of one life. We call that life in six words. And so we actually have a, a free curriculum and sermon series. Both of these are actually also available uh, on Open Network, uh, Life.Church's Open Network. And so there's another platform you can get those for free. So a sermon series on the life in six words, uh, a, um, 
a curriculum that's kind of video based that's actually for adult small groups and uh, teenage uh, student small groups as well uh, that kind of goes deep into the theology of the gospel so you can go deep and wide uh, with the gospel and uh, also actually on you version we've got some uh, brand new uh, devotion that's not been up very long uh, one is kind of more geared for uh, teenagers uh, it's called life in six words uh, it's actually a seven day devo with a call to action on it on uh, using the app and then we have another uh, devotion that uh, Greg wrote called uh, for, uh, Six Words That Will Change Your Life. It's a 40-day devotional, uh, which is also, uh, it's great for students too, but it's great for adults, your leadership teams, and it too is based on those six words. It goes a little bit deeper, obviously, 40 days, uh, but that, that's a great tool. And then we have a resource uh, that just got updated called Now Grow, uh, which is great for new believers, or I would say any believer, growing believers. Uh, that you could use it. It just kind of helps focus on uh, seven key questions that every new believer, really every believer, believer needs to answer. It's foundational to their faith, uh, but it also it covers again those uh, those life in six words among other things. And so, uh, head on over to the the dare to share org store, or you could go the link of Greg just put in the in the chat box to uh, to open network as well as a place that you can uh, download those things for free to get it done. Yeah, and just a, one of the things I, since we got a little bit of time, if you guys, I really encourage you to take a look, deep look at the app because there's a couple different things on there. One is your cause circle. So you can literally put the names of the people you're praying for, caring for and sharing the gospel with in here. Your teenagers can do that. And then every day you can program it to pop up and give you a reminder to pray. And then after you pray for those people, praying hands go up, which is, I don't know. I just like the praying hands. I think they're cool. Um, and then you can also have faith sharing groups. So your youth group can, uh, teens and youth group can be part of a faith sharing group or a small group or like our Dare to Share staff is a faith sharing group. So right now we're collectively praying for, caring for 265 people. Uh, and you kind of see the latest, you know, somebody's praying, somebody share the gospel, Phil Hildebrand prayed for the cause circle. And it's not, a, there's no leaderboard, so it doesn't get weird, um, but it's really, really cool. And then you can see the statistics. So right now around the world, over 22,000 people uh, globally getting prayed for, cared for, and uh, share the gospel with via the app. We've had over... 35,000 downloads in the last 12 months or so. And right now in Paraguay, somebody is sharing the gospel right now with the app. And you can see in the United States, East Coast is lighting up. So it's pretty cool that you can do that. We've got technology the Apostle Paul would only dream of. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. But he was faithful with what he had. And we need to be faithful with what we got. And God's given us a time of technology, so let's use it uh, for the glory of God. All right, Scott, definitely sharing this with our youth and other ministers. Yes, thank you. I'm also encouraged to use this personally. I have some friends in Calvary do so. That's great. Uh, thanks for this workshop. Hey, one other quick thing. We have a free event uh, in November, November 13th, called Dare to Share Live. It's like a, a teen outreach day. Uh, if you just go to daretoshare.live.org, all you need, you have to have adult leaders there, you have to have internet, and you have to be willing to do the outreach because this is not a watch party, this is a do party. So your students will get inspired, equipped to share the gospel, and then we'll go out and serve the community and share the gospel of Christ. And by then everybody's gonna be vaccined up, I'm sure, and we'll be able to release the crazies again. And uh, Kids come back so excited uh, from sharing their faith. And then that gives them the courage to go back and tell their friends about Christ. But we also have tools on the app that they can use, using social media to share Christ. So man, thousands and thousands, like a year and a half ago, we had 28,000 or 25,000 gospel conversations happen in one day. And uh, we're about to launch this, uh, this next year in across Africa, Australia, and then eventually South and Central America. And eventually we want to do these teen outreach days all around the 
all around the world raise up a generation of students. So this Dare to Share Live and the Life in Six Words app are like seed chucking class, helping teens chuck gospel seeds. Those seven values are like helping youth leaders build a greenhouse so those seeds multiply throughout the year. So gospelize, download that book if you can, go to daretoshare.org, get all the information you need, and then have your students download the Life in Six Words app and we can get this party started. So any other questions before we close out? I feel like Kim should ask a question because she's the only one with a camera on. <laughs> I'm just taking it all in. I've been working with middle school kids at my church for 10 years. So wow. some of them, um, like I'm watching them get married. We have an intern program. Some of them are interns at our church. I go to Calvary Corvallis mm. and in a, about two hours um, south of Portland. So I grew up in Southeast Portland. So I know the area, but yeah. They, I just, they did a Dare to Share Live in a, is it a First Baptist Corvallis? There's a First Baptist, yeah. Yeah, they did it there, I think, two years ago. So that wouldn't surprise me. They're right in downtown, almost right in downtown. So they're yeah. they have a really cool location. We're right next to a park, which works out really well, but it's like a hiking park. Yeah. Uh, but we're a little bit out of town. But I'm I'll talk to the guys. I'm excited to talk to my middle school pastor and my high school pastor. We're all really good friends. A lot of us, my middle school pastor, we've been serving together for about eight years. So mm. Um, but our youth leaders are like our kind of, we're all in the age of like 20 to 30. So right. <laughs> some of us have been around with these kids for a while. So I'm just excited just to hear um, just like what tools are out there. Cause yeah. we're, you know, you're like, you're like, I don't even know how to tell my kids to go share the gospel. Cause yeah. they have the time I'm like, will you pray for the person next to you? And they're like, I pray that her shoes don't squeak. And you're like, no, That's not what we're asking. Well, here's Kim, here's where we can help you. We're like yeah. Liam Neeson and Taken. We have a very particular set of skills. And that's <laughs> to help inspire, equip, and mobilize teenagers for the gospel and give youth leaders the tools they need. So I would, man, get everybody to dare to share.org, go <laughs> through the stuff, get the gospelized book, and do dare to share live. I mean, we're there. We do, and we're going to start doing webinars every quarter through Dare to Share. To provide tools and resources, we have a Facebook page called the Gospel Advancing Ministry Facebook mm -hmm. page. That we have 700 plus youth leaders that are sharing ideas all the time about how to make this a reality. So yeah. we're there to help you. So thanks yeah. for being thanks for being in youth ministry. You're awesome. Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. It's where the yeah, it's where the best action is. So soul <laughs> action, transformation. So oh. all right, John, why don't you wrap us up here, bud? All right. Awesome. Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you, Kim, for your service to youth ministry, Edith, your passion. And just thank you all for uh, for being here uh, today, just hanging out with us and, and listening. Obviously, you're here because you care about Jesus. You love Jesus and you care about teenagers and youth ministry. And uh, we're here to just uh, help help you do what we can to mobilize a generation, to reach a generation. Just a couple more quick things. I put it in the chat box. You may have to scroll up a little bit. The Facebook groups, if you're a youth leader, we'd love for you to join that, to be a part of that Gospel Advancing Facebook community. Uh, we have a lot of fun on there, but we also share ideas, best practices, resource, resources. It's a great community of kingdom-minded uh, Gospel Advancing leaders. A Gospel Advancing leader is someone who shares the gospel personally and mobilizes teenagers to do the same. And Jesus was the greatest Gospel Advancing leader of all, and we just want to follow him and becoming gospel advancing leaders ourselves. Uh, also, uh, we have Greg has a podcast. We would love for you to subscribe to that podcast. Just go to daretoshare.org slash podcast, or you can just check out the whole uh, website, navigate, and you'll find it on there. And I don't know, I was just thinking too, as Greg was sharing and, and then also listening to some of you share, we got to take the lead. It starts with us, right, as leaders. And so how cool would it be if all of us on here just committed within the next couple of days within the next 48 hours that every single one of us would step out and, and share the gospel with someone you could use the app uh let greg would tell you this i'll tell you this and using it never opened this app and and gotten shut down obviously not everybody i shared with with the app trusted christ but they've they've never turned me down it's so engaging and interactive it gives you a chance to get to the gospel message 
Uh, and so you can do that face to face, even six feet apart. But the audio story feature is very powerful as well. You can record your personal like message in your, in your voice. Uh, and it also creates a link. They don't have to download the app. You can send that link and they can see those slides when they open that link visually. God, our sins, paying everyone life right there and hear your voice pre-recorded personally sharing the gospel. I've had the opportunity to lead friends that live 1,200 miles away uh, to Christ through the audio stores. Power in the gospel. Great things happen. So using the, the audio story app, it's a great place for us to start, if, especially if you're a little afraid or nervous. This is a great way to start or even just using uh, the, the quick starter as well. So I'm just going to I'm just going to close this out in a word of prayer. And I'm just going to pray over all of us, just uh, believing that several of us on here are going to take that challenge and step up. And we're all going to decide to share the gospel. And listen, uh, when we share the gospel ourselves, it just creates that enthusiasm that I think is contagious, more t contagious than COVID <laughs> that spreads uh, to other uh, to other leaders that we work with, to, t to teenagers that we work with. And uh, that's where it starts with us and that inspiration. So thanks again on behalf of Greg. Thank you all so much for being here and let's uh let's close in a word of prayer together uh, father thank you so much uh just for um this the opportunity to connect uh leaders from all over uh the country maybe even the world just gathering together here uh just to be inspired to to be uh, equipped to be encouraged and they've been encouraging to us as well uh to greg and myself and so we're just so thankful for this opportunity uh to conspire together for the cause uh, your cause that you've given us. And so I just pray uh, for every leader on this call, Lord. Some of them may be discouraged. Some of them may be uh, even thinking about getting out of ministry or not sure why you called them in the first place. I just pray that this sparks them in a new way, lights a fire into them. And I pray that that starts with them, uh, they themselves sharing the gospel with someone within the next couple of days, within the next 40, 48 hours, whether it's the app or, or another way, or just face-to-face -face conversation, sharing the good news of Jesus and mobilizing, inspiring, inspiring, equipping, and mobilizing uh, teenagers to do the same. I just pray your blessings upon every person, every leader, every, uh, every family that's represented on here, and every ministry uh, that is represented on here, that we'll work together uh, by your grace, for your glory, until every team everywhere hears the gospel from a friend, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Have a great rest of your conference. Let's go gospelize.